G'day everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today is episode 4 of this Hercus CNC CompuTurn lathe retrofit. Now in today's video I'll be showing some uh, of the mechanical work and that's uh, attaching the saddle, the cross slide, uh, new angular contact bearings and the satellite screws. Right, oh, I've got the saddle off the machine here and I'm cleaning the surface that attaches the wiper way seals and just giving that a little bit of a scrape with a razor blade and a clean up with some uh, brake cleaning fluid. Now I noticed some of these holes were a little bit dicky so in with a three millimeter tap just to tap those threads and just so I won't have any grief putting those tiny little three mil screws back in bit of a blow off with some air just to clear those holes and I did this on both faces of the saddle. Now the saddle is a bit strange so in this arrangement it has a little a push button there that goes in there and activates the small micro switch. Now I did try to replace all the micro switches but unfortunately I pulled that one off a bit later and realized that it was actually a different micro switch so I'm going to reuse the one that came with the machine even though it's 40 years old. Now one of the main reasons I'm replacing this wiring is because after 40 years it's uh, gone a bit stale. It's rock hard and uh, not very flexible. Now because this travels with the saddle um, I opted to replace it with some nice flexible cable. Now it's a little bit strange because on this lathe here it actually has a Z limit switch here. Now it's Envisage they put that on back in the day and that was for if you're running the tail stock on a job You could come back and if it bumps the tail stock it it stops uh, the machine from rapiding now I know on the half slave I was using at the TAFE where I was teaching um, You had to be very very careful you never ever homed with the tail stock deployed And that was a, a mechanical or manual tail stock not like on the ST lays where you could set a hydraulic one all right, so uh, I need to strip some wiring and uh, up here and uh, put some um, connectors on. Just going to use some uh, crimp lugs on this. Now I've managed to wire up the limit switches here, the limit switch 1 and 2. Limit switch 1 is the Z, limit switch 2 is the X. You can see the plunger there and that would not fit. The new ones I bought would not fit in the Z axis where it should go. Now off camera I did have to drill into the saddle because the new wiring that I purchased was thicker. So I had to enlarge that hole to 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now feeding it through that hole there, which is roughly about an inch and a half long, I had to spray on some silicon spray to allow that cable to be drawn through that hole. Now of course once I got it through the hole here, you can see the little white uh, hold down wire hold down uh, clips there that I've had to reinstall. You can see that wiring tucked right around that other brand new limit switch. It was quite a bit hard and a bit tricky to get in there and... Uh, you can see that little both plungers are working with ease. Okay, I've lubed up the saddle and uh, placed it on top of the lathe bed. I'm just putting on the retaining plates now and uh, in the background there I had to mute the sound because my granddaughter invaded my workshop and was pushing buttons on the uh, on the old controller. She loves going out there and doing that. Now I decided to put some Loctite, of course, on the retaining plates and the satellite ball screw. Now when I say Loctite, I put on a small amount. It's not like I want to weld it in there permanently, but I just want to try and limit the risk of those bolts coming loose under normal operation. Now I probably should have torqued those to a torque setting, but I didn't worry about it. I just nipped them up firmly with a Allen key. And here I am just tightening up those uh, saddle, you could, you could probably call them saddle retaining plates or something like that. 
And when they made these lathes, they everything was precision ground. And uh, when you put those plates on and nip it up, there is absolutely no play in that saddle. Um, so sideways travel, you know, uh, free travel or anything like that. And they fit literally like a finger in a glove. I'm just testing that there now. I've got the saddle back on the little lathe here. Um, I'll put the guides back on underneath here and attach the satellite screw nut and uh, it feels rather good. I've replaced the angular contact bearings front and rear. In this I've got to put new bearings up in here now. Now it's a different design up the top. This only has a, a, single, a single race of angular contact, one here, one here. When you tighten them up they squeeze together. Um, I can push on this, I can actually get it to move. If I pull on it, there's a limit switch that needs to go down in here. And with that limit switch, there's a little um, adjusting bolt here. So you can adjust it so you can get full travel. Um, there's another limit switch here. That's the one I showed you earlier on the camera. So that triggers that, and the which is for the Z when it uh, hits into the tail stock. And we've got an X here, hidden under here which will be triggered by the same sort of setup on the Z. You've got a little adjusting nut for the nut and that slides back and triggers it here. All right. Time to bolt this together. And I've replaced the X-axis um, angular contact bearings up here. And I've got those working rather well. And as you can see before, these, these screws, so both satellite screws are in there now. They're all being greased up. Um, before I replaced the limit switches. And unfortunately, this limit switch was a different size. It had a different length plunger than all the others. So I fitted the old one and it's still working. So we can check that. If I bring up my multimeter here. Yeah, you should be able to see the screen here in the digital modding meter if I hold these two ends on here. We should have a continuity, so this is uh, normally closed. If I press this little trigger here, it should open circuit. And it's got a real little tiny touch on that. You don't have to press that hard. So that one's working. So let's go to the x-axis now. And we can see that that's open there and if I just gently wind this back and trigger that limit switch in the X that should work as well there we go and we're working there as well so both limit switches there are working so I'm going to put the cross slide on now So off camera I've um, put this pulley back on, it's got a nice little collet arrangement in here. I've put a brand new timing belt on and I'll move that wire out of the way. Here's our pivot bolt going in, I might just put a little dab of Loctite. I'll put a little bit of grease on that as well. That goes in there. Now this is a pivot bolt that allows the servo motor to adjust up and down. So with that tight, you can still see that that is free to adjust. Now I'm just checking with my finger under here on the bottom pulley. It does have a retainer on the outside of the pulley to stop the belt, uh, you know, going off track. Here's our adjuster, and that goes onto the side of the machine. 
on here and that clamps on the bottom of this aluminium housing to uh, clamp that servo motor and hold that belt adjustment. So we'll put a little bit of Loctite on that. In we go. Now that gave me a fair bit of grief to get that started. So there's my belt adjustment. I'm just gonna, a little bit hard to feel if it's tight or not. Very hard to get your finger in there. So anyway, I'll adjust that off camera. Well, thank you very much for following along today. Um, hope you enjoyed that video. I had to get this mechanical work done today because I've got Peter Homan coming over uh, to my house to help me with the wiring. So Peter's from Homan Designs. And hopefully in uh, episode five, you'll see us wiring up all the necessary stuff. See you later.